Hey, welcome back to Late on 8, and tonight we're featuring Fox Cape Productions video series, and I'm sitting with the face behind Fox Cape Productions, Sierra Anderson. Hello, and uh, thanks for coming in here. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's me. awesome. And uh, let's get just right into it. What is Fox Cape Productions? How to get started? And you're based locally, right? Yes, I am based locally. Um, Foscape kind of began with a personal story. Um, it's all about story in my mind um, as far as what I produce and Foxcape started with me producing my own story. I've sort of lived this dual life of being here in Breckenridge in the winter and then I traveled to Alaska during the summer. I'm a fourth generation fisherman. My dad's been fishing, his family is just running the family forever. So we go up there every summer to fish and we basically fall off the map. Like, we are isolated from everything and everyone. So friends and family are always like, where are you? What are you doing? And so video was a means for me to communicate that to friends and family. I bought a good camera and spent the summer uh, just filming everything I could about my life and fishing and everything. And um, it turned into sort of a documentary almost of, of my life up there. And, um, eventually got picked up by a couple production companies and um, went into nego negotiations there for a, a TV show. That's right, and that show was picked up by TLC and it was called Hook, Line and Sisters. Tell me about what that experience was like and what the premise of that show was. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of a rarity to see very many women in the fishing industry. So that was sort of a niche right there, just women fishing. And then my dad, he's also his own character. Putting a family on a fishing boat in closet-sized quarters for three months out of the year, <laughs> you can just imagine there's sure. there's a lot of I mean material there to work with. In a matter of three weeks, they greenlit the show, and oh, wow. we went straight to... To filming. And what's really cool about that is the network got to use some of the shots that you were shooting out there. So you really got to see what the experience was like from your point of view. Yes, they had to because um, everything that I shot was the backstory. Right. And so they brought in a lot of material from past seasons and everything. I filmed um, what we see right here is the first, the first episode of the season and it's herring fishing. Well, prior to that year, I spent the season filming and um, filmed an accident that happened. And I got it on footage, on camera, and uh, we got run into by another boat. Our boat rolled over. We almost sank. There was just a lot of drama there. It sounds like it. People were just like, does well, this really that, happen? It sounds like it's a high intense job. But tell me about wh what it took to find that balance between getting the camera out to do what you need to do for the filming and then also just do your job. Absolutely. Uh, it's very, ch it was very challenging. I mean, after the time I get yelled at by my dad, who's also my captain. <laughs> so there's right. tension there, like put the camera down and do your job. But I was so like passionate about, I got to get this on camera. So I'd wear GoPros all over me and I'd have my camera and I, it was very hard though. And you're also not done. You're going back to Alaska to continue on telling your story as well as the stories of others. Uh, my passion really, I love fishing, but I also love filming. And so if I can combine both those passions, which the TV show is the best of both worlds for me, um, then that's where I want to head. So I'm getting into the fishing industry. I'm staying in it, but I, I'm applying more of my filming background. That's what I want to do, so it works. It is definitely working for you. Now, what is in store for Fox Cape Productions and what we can expect next? Well, last summer I kind of mixed fishing with filming, which is exactly what I wanted to do. I fished for part of the summer and then I filmed for part of the summer and I filmed fishermen um, in the boat harbors uh, all around Alaska, really flew all over the place, filming for um, the anti-pebble campaign. Okay, and tell me about that. Pebble like, people just don't like little stones? No, or, no, oh. no. <laughs> actually a lot more than that. Pebble okay. mine is the um, name for what will be the largest mine proposal basically in the world, okay. largest mine wow. in the world. Um, $500 billion mine proposal that's supposed to go in. The conflict here is that it's being proposed at the headwaters of Bristol Bay, which is um, the largest sockeye salmon fishery in the world. And so I filmed um, seven short sort of webisodes called the Bristol Bay Dispatches and um, directly from Bristol Bay, different fishermen within the different communities and um, just building advocacy for the campaign. So that was a really cool experience, just traveling all over Alaska and, and filming. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're going to capture some uh, great stories on what people have to say and, and on both sides. Of, of the controversy because uh, it sounds like then either way it's going to have an impact on what what either group wants 
mm-hmm. out of the, the situation. So very interesting story to follow, and we have some of that then to, to show right now. So let's get to it, taking a look at the Bristol Bay dispatches right here on Late on 8. <laughs> 